Okay, so let's do an example where we determine whether various solutes are soluble in a solvent. And the solvent that we're going to be working with is hexane in this example. And I've given the condensed molecular structure there. And now what we want to do, the strategy behind all these problems is to identify the main intermolecular force acting in each of these substances. And then after we find that out, we compare that intermolecular attraction to the main intermolecular attraction in the solvent. If they're very similar, then we would predict that the solute is soluble in the solvent. So let's look at hexane first. So as I said, there is the condensed structural formula, and we see that we have a hydrocarbon. There are no electronegative atoms in there. There's nothing to cause a dipole of any kind. And so the main intermolecular force in hexane is dispersion forces. So let's write that down. So hexane is nonpolar, and we're looking at dispersion forces. Okay, so now that we know that, now our job is to go through each of these five substances and determine whether the intermolecular forces match. If they match, we predict it to be soluble. If they don't, then we predict it to be not soluble or insoluble. So let's look at carbon tetrachloride first. So now you look at carbon tetrachloride and you might be tempted to think that this molecule has a dipole moment and therefore has dipole-dipole interactions. But don't forget that you need to draw the structure for the molecule and look to see if the bond dipoles cancel. So carbon tetrachloride has a tetrahedral structure and the carbon chlorine bonds are all polar but all of them cancel. So the three pointing down generally are if you add up those bond dipoles they're equal and opposite to the one pointing straight up. So that would look like this. So there's the bond dipole pointing straight up and if you add up all these guys pointing down then they cancel it out. So overall this molecule is nonpolar and it interacts with dispersion forces. Okay so now we look and we see, okay, it, similar intermolecular attractions, so we would predict that carbon tetrachloride is soluble. Okay, so let's do another one. Now let's look at ethanol. So here's ethanol. Now, what do we notice about ethanol? We see this oxygen bonded to hydrogen. And when we see hydrogen bonded directly to a very electronegative atom such as oxygen or fluorine or nitrogen we start thinking about hydrogen bonding. So we're thinking about hydrogen bonding and methanol can hydrogen bond. Now going back to our solvent which interacts mainly through dispersion forces, those intermolecular attractions are not similar and so this molecule, this substance, ethanol, is not soluble. We would predict it to be not soluble because the intermolecular attractions do not match. So insoluble. Okay, so intermolecular forces do not match. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next slide, and then let's take a look at carbon disulfide. So here's carbon disulfide, and of course we are working in hexane, which is nonpolar and interacts mainly through dispersion forces. Okay, so let's look at carbon disulfide. Again, draw the Lewis structure. So let's go ahead and do that. And when we do that, we're going to get this. 
okay, the structure. So there's the VSEPR geometry. So again, any dipole that exists here would cancel. So we have a nonpolar molecule. So carbon disulfide is nonpolar. If it's nonpolar, it interacts mainly through dispersion forces, just like hexane. And so we would predict that it is soluble. Okay. So now let's look at hydrogen fluoride. All right, so something should occur to you right away. So hydrogen is bonded to a very electronegative fluorine. So we have the potential for hydrogen bonding. We also have the potential. We actually have a very strong dipole. So either way that you think about it, we have a strong dipole, hydrogen bonding. So this molecule, we would predict, is not soluble because the intermolecular attractions are not close to hexane. So hexane is nonpolar. Hydrogen fluoride is very polar, non-soluble, insoluble. OK. And so now let's look at, let's see, make sure. Okay, so benzene, that's our last one. Okay, so look at the structure for benzene as I'm drawing it here. So there's a hydrogen, hydrogen. What do you see? So basically we see a molecule that has carbon and hydrogen. It is an aromatic ring, but again, interacts with dispersion forces. So we would predict that it is soluble in hexane because it mainly interacts through dispersion forces just like hexane. So basically, keep in mind as you're thinking about these problems, the saying, like dissolves like. So if the intermolecular forces are similar in the solvent and the solute, we would expect it to be soluble. If they are not similar, we would expect it to be insoluble.